Good morning, friends. It's another glorious day here in the capital. Much better than it was yesterday. I couldn't really walk around because it was like way too uh, rainy. Um, today I'm going to go see some more museums and probably some of the outdoor stuff and monuments. So yeah, come along. It's going to be a lot of fun. Cubert? DC is fast becoming one of my favorite cities. I mean, granted, I've only really seen the downtown area um, and I've mostly been in museums and hiding from the, uh, the rain, but um, it's just beautiful. The buildings, the history, yeah. I mean, you don't get stuff like that or that in, uh, many American cities, you know, most of them are like, what, 20 years old? <laughs> this feels like you're in the birthplace of America right here. And uh, I really am enjoying myself. So my first stop for today is another Smithsonian, the Companion Museum, an original in fact, to the one that I visited the other day. This is the Smithsonian's Air and Space Museum frequently cited as one of the greatest museums in the world. So let's get in there and put that accolade to the test. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Right from the get-go when you walk in, this place just smacks you in the face with incredible aviation history. Wow. It's gonna be a good day. Friendship 7 from the Mercury program. The capsule that astronauts famously said, you don't get in it, you put it on. <laughs> it's pretty small. This was the capsule that put John Glenn into space. The first American ever to leave this atmosphere. It's pretty incredible. And right next to it, the Gemini 4, or Gemini as they'd probably say. You might recognize this satellite. It's Sputnik. Yes, that is actually Sputnik. Ooh, lunar. <laughs> I've touched a lot of moon in my life, but that one was pretty smooth. Probably the world's second famous satellite, Telstar. That's enough of that. You guys will probably recognize that designation. Look at this. This is the original studio model of the Starship Enterprise. They also have Lindbergh's famous transatlantic flyer, the Spirit of St. Louis. Another piece of aviation history. Man, they've got it all here. Just about to head into the planetarium for a quick showing, but if anyone knows where I can buy one of these models of a Zeiss planetarium projector, let me know in the comments. I just think they are the coolest looking things ever. This X-15 was an experimental plane made by NASA. For any of you aviation buffs out there, I was just comparing it to the famous U-2 spy plane. The U-2 gets a maximum speed of 805 kilometers an hour. This one reached 4,534 miles per hour. That's incredible. Uh, the U-2 also reaches a high altitude level of about 70,000 uh, feet. This one works above 100,000, so it's pretty much a spacecraft, which is masquerading as a plane. That's crazy. Yeah. Big air show, 1908. You know what the Wright brothers said? Battle suit. Sued him. Took him to court and uh, demanded all of the prize money. 
This is the Wright Flyer, the world's first successful powered airplane from 1903. It doesn't get much more aviation history than that. fly a plane all you have to do is train we launch any object from the earth and put it into earth orbit we have to get it from where you say Gene Kranz's famous Apollo 13 vest I bet there's a fair amount of sweat on this thing. <laughs> it's quite a selection of rockets. Two, one, booster ignition, and the final liftoff of Discovery. A tribute to the dedication, hard work, and pride of America's space shuttle team. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Nice selection of cameras brought on the shuttle right the way up to this guy. <laughs> this is a truly great museum. Great exhibits, great planes, great time. So this rather imposing looking building behind me is the Smithsonian's National Natural History Museum. Uh, supposedly one of the world's best. Let's go take a look inside. Well, this is quite an impressive entrance to a museum. Beautiful. Can't wait to explore all three floors of exhibits. Would you look at the size of that swordfish? This is one of the main reasons I really want to go to places like Montana and Wyoming. You know, aside from seeing like Devil's Tower and Yellowstone and stuff like that. thing lots of people forget about Tyrannosaurus there's no skin pigment preserved so it could literally be any color maybe purple like Barney maybe we just don't know these totem poles it's pretty neat I think we'd all really like to thank Peter Buck and really all the members of REM for their commitment to uh, anthropology. Ah, the elusive narwhal. Goodbye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. Checking out these geology areas and experimenting with these paper clips. Watch them get closer. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's incredible. And of course, 
I'm in the IMAX again. I've probably spent like 50 quid in here this week. I just love large format cinema. I don't know what to say. The Smithsonian guys really know how to museum. Good on them. Well, there's still plenty of sunlight left. Uh, I think I'm gonna go check out some of the uh, national monuments. And it's a nice day, so why don't we walk? It's gonna take about half an hour. But uh, yeah, just down this long path, down the mall, the mall as they call it, which apparently is a national park. It's pretty nice. Would you look at this guy? Apparently it's closed indefinitely, or at least until 2019 for repairs. Probably from that time that one of Peter Parker's friends destroyed the lift shaft inside. All the marble and granite are cut around the stone. Ruined it for the rest of us. <laughs> so just to give you a little idea of the geography of this town, here is the uh, memorial. Way down there is the mall, which is lined either side with all those Smithsonian's and it goes right down to the uh, Capitol building. We spring across, right down the other end is the uh, Jefferson, no, Lincoln Memorial with the uh, famous pond in front of it. Places where like the likes of Martin Luther King gave their famous speeches and then you swing around here to the north You'll just be able to see poking over the trees there Don's house For like you know three days of the week when he's not in Mar-a-Lago If there was any kind of museum here, I'm sure they'd be telling you about how the brickwork changes like halfway up uh, And I can't quite remember why I think maybe they ran out of limestone or sandstone or something during the Civil War, but uh, I'm sure you can Google it for the real, the real skinny. Yeah, it's pretty interesting though. This is a World War II memorial. It's pretty nice. So there's the World War II memorial. Straight across and down this other side of the mall is the Lincoln Memorial. Nice. Quite the little walk, but we finally made it. We are at the Lincoln Memorial. Very nice it is too. Quite an impressive structure. Dedicated to this guy who's hiding inside. <gasps> Wow. That's really something. guy for some advice like when's the right time to buy a house there we go that's pretty much the full length of the mall right away from down there beautiful Next up on the grand tour of DC's monuments. It's a bit like that scene in Never Ending Story. How am I gonna make it through this grand chasm? There he is, the man himself. Way, 
So, yet another memorial or monument, uh, probably the last one for today. This is the Jefferson. Well, we're moving on now, moving on to the east side. No smart ass, Jefferson, singular. Let's go and have a look if he's in. Hello, anybody home? You know, walking past all these monuments today, Jefferson, Roosevelt, Lincoln, it's kind of crazy that just through that gap, we have a guy living in that building who is uh, pretty far removed from any of their levels of expertise or diplomacy. I really hope he doesn't screw the world up. Isn't that right, Tommy? You'd never stood for it in your day, would you, lad? Man, I think that's all about all the monuments I can handle for one day. Time to go find some food. Oh yeah, this'll do. Mm. Well, it's been a busy, long day. I can't think of a better way then eating a delicious bowl of lobster bisque. Mmm, a bisque. Mm. Thanks for watching yet again. Stay tuned for more exciting videos. Till next time, see you later. Mr. Jefferson, I have a problem. I know your problem. The Lincoln Memorial was too crowded. No, 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 it's, it's not that. It's, um... No one ever comes to see me. I don't blame them. I never did anything important. Just the Declaration of Independence, the Louisiana Purchase. Um, I seem to have caught you at a bad time, so I'll just go. Wait! Please don't go. I get so lonely.